Hi, it's the Jill Luff. We are here at Crow Farm. Today we are going to talk some pumpkin patch, some apples, and some corn. Let's go. I got drone footage, apple orchard, and some leaves. I got drone footage, pumpkin patch, and some tall trees. Fall in New England. The air is ripe with the aroma of Tom Brady, David Ortiz, pumpkin Dunkachinos, and apples, which is why we headed to Crow Farm. Hi, it's the Joe Luft, and I am here today with my guest, Paul Kroll of Crow Farm. Thank hey, you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for coming. Um, so let's get right into it. What is the history of Crow Farm? Well, my Grandfather and his brother purchased a property in 1916. And my grandfather went off in World War I. And my great uncle managed the farm for a few years until my, my grandfather got back. Great uncle wasn't really that much into farming. So they, you know, split everything, you know, split off. My grandfather, David, stayed on the farm, started off. You know, it was a, a truck farm. They also had a small dairy, you know, four or five dairy cows uh, and chickens. He had a lot of chickens. He had thousands of chickens. My grandfather liked the chickens. My father, not so much. Did you like the chickens? No. What didn't you like about the chickens? They're dirty, nasty. <laughs> <laughs> so no more chicken. You, you talked about your grandfather, how he started the farm. Yeah. What is kind of your, uh, you know, birth into the farm from, you know, when you started to obviously when you kind of made the switch recently? What's that story been like? I always liked to grow apples. So it was, you know, that was kind of my, you, know, you call it a passion, but, you know, it's what I really was interested in doing. Mm -hmm. And and we did it, everything for, you know, really, like I said, up until two years ago. And in the a couple of years ago, before COVID, I felt like I was being stretched in too many different directions, uh, trying to grow 50 different crops and taking care of them all and having them all come out good. And so we kind of put a plan together to eliminate the retail and wholesale a few, go back to the way we used to do it and wholesale a few crops okay. in the summer and focus on pick your own apples and pick your own pumpkins. I think people know that a farmer's job is always very tough, but well, what is that really like? It's, it's the kind of job that you really have to like. Because um, if you look at it from a pure business standpoint, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, you work an awful lot, you do not really make a lot of money. You can make a good, you know, you have a good comfortable living, but mm -hmm. for the hours that you put in, it just, if you really looked at it like a businessman, it, it might not make a lot of sense. Growing up, did you think, I want to do this? Yeah, I always knew I wanted to do it. Had there been points in your life, though, you knew you wanted to do it, but you're kind of like, maybe this is more than I can, you know, take on, or maybe I should do something else? No, I never, I never felt like I wanted to move on, mm -hmm. but maybe I always realized somewhere in the back of my mind that it was, yeah, it was spread pretty thin. It yeah. just, you know, I had too many irons in the fire. It almost sounds like an artist where they might, you know, start with one kind of medium that they really enjoy doing. And then throughout their career, it's, you know, it changes. They have the core principles of what they enjoy, but there's only so much you can do for so long without maybe running into a roadblock or. Yeah. And, and yeah, I think that's true. And, and even over the years between my grandfather, my father and myself, I mean, things changed. I know when we closed the stand, a lot of people were worried that we were going to, you know, sell it and, you know, not be a farm anymore. And it's, um, we've been through a lot of changes, maybe not quite as drastic as closing the stand, but mm -hmm. I guess you could say opening the stand was just as drastic. To go from all wholesale to all retail, it was a big step. Um, 
getting rid of the animals was a big step. Starting the greenhouses was a big step. So, you know, it's progress, I guess you'd call it, or just tweaking it, um, to, you know, in account of the resources you have, the time you have, the um, interests you have at any given time. So we've got the, uh, the apples, the pumpkins, and the corn maze. I say we talked about it, let's go check it out. All right, let's go. Like all hard-hitting journalistic pieces, it's a requisite to get the walking and talking shot. And boy, we did not miss. What makes a good apple? Like when, you, when you're looking at, you know, I think lots of people come here and they, they think they see this great apple on the tree and they grab it, it's not it. How do you pick the best apple? See how that's, the sun it's kind of hard, but yeah. it's not like totally green. It's got a little... Like a yellow, yellow. But then compare it to that one. And so that is what we want or what we don't want? Yeah, that's what you want. See, it's kind of yellowy. Okay. And it's, you know, it's got a bright red. And that's the color that people think of is that's the color that a An apple. strain of Fuji should be. So the back color is really what people... Yeah. And it's kind of yellowy. And that, like, pretty much fell off when I picked it. So if it's, like, falling off, that's, like... Yeah, then that's definitely ready. Can I try this apple? Oh, yeah. Please do. Let's do that. It's a nice sweet apple. Do you get this a lot? How about them apples? How about them apples? Yeah. Matt Damon. <laughs> How many times do people say I've that? heard it a few times. How about them apples? I had that one written down. I had yeah, to do well, it. Yeah, you figured you must have somebody writing stuff. But the hard-hitting questions didn't stop there. So there's no such thing as a bad apple? Really, whatever apple you just picked off the tree ripe is going to be a really good apple. Does the apple fall far from the tree? No. <laughs> that, that saying is true. <laughs> After absolutely nailing that Matt Damon line, it was time to move on to greener pastures. Or should I say, oranger pastures. Or is it orange pastures? Orange? Is that what they say on the East Coast? So yeah, can you tell us about the pumpkin patch? Well, this is, um, uh, this is a pumpkin patch. Uh, <laughs> so there are four or five different varieties in here. They all get different sizes or, you know, it might be a different color. Can I pick up one of these pumpkins here? Is that, what's the best time of year to start picking a pumpkin? Uh, late September. What's your favorite, pumpkin carving or pumpkin pie? I kind of like to carve pumpkins. The Smashing Pumpkins, great rock band or property destruction? A great rock band. Rest easy tonight, tonight, Mr. William Corrigan. For today may be the greatest, but tomorrow is a new one. And before we venture on to a new morn, we had one last frontier to complete, the corn maze. <laughs> Oh, look at this. Got ourselves a uh, fellow patron here. It was, I have a show on Sandwich Community TV. You got a sandwich where? It's the Joe Luft and I'm here with... Brandon. What are you scared of? I'm scared this conversation is going to keep going and you're going to keep asking really stupid questions. Interesting. It's the Joe Luft and I'm here with... I'll tell you my name. My name's Dick. Pleasure to meet you, Dick. Uh, can you tell us about the 1971-72 championship year? I was the starting quarterback for the squad, had been since my sophomore year. That usually don't happen, but it did in our case. Was dating a girl named Mary Claire. Anyways, we won that championship. I ain't married to Mary Claire no more. I still talk to her, still see her on the Facebook. Were you a starter or were you the backup quarterback? Boy, what did I just tell you? I uh, good evening, madame. How are you doing? Well, I'd be a lot better if a homeless student in a suit didn't come up to me with a half-eaten apple and a microphone asking me stupid questions. Okay, okay, playing a little hard to get. You seem a little boxy. Your face is a little boxy. Do you think you get a bad reputation for scaring crows? Oh, do I get a bad reputation for doing my job? What do you call a group of crows? Friends. Something you'll never have. No, it, it, it's, it's a murder. A group of crows is a murder. Come on and ride through Cape Cod with me. Roses, I got roses. Roses, I pull and some.